Predictive analytics can be scary sometimes. A couple years ago, there was a gentleman who walked into a Target at about 9 p.m. one night, and the guy was fuming. He was furious, and he walked up to the counter, and he demanded to see the manager of the store. And so the person at the desk went and got the manager and brought him to the front, and the guy walked up and said, I'm, I'm, uh, Sir, I hear you have a problem. What can I do to help you? What's, what's the issue? And the, the man, who you could tell was in his about 40s or 50s, came up and slammed a period or slammed a circular onto the desk and said, How dare you guys? Why on earth are you sending these to my house? This is addressed to my 16-year-old daughter, and she's in high school, and you're sending her ads for baby uh, carriages and diapers? Why are you doing this? And the man stormed out of the target. And a week later, that gentleman came back and went up to the manager and found him again and apologized to him because that week he found out that his 16-year-old daughter was indeed pregnant. And Target knew before he did. Target knew this because, yeah, Target knew this because of all those nice little key fobs that each one of you probably have on your key set. Because every time that you join that loyalty, you join that loyalty program and every time you scan in, Target records what you buy. And over time, they collect data and data and data. And from that data, they can figure out trends. And they can begin to predict. So they know by your purchase behavior, whether you're pregnant, whether you're sick, they know all kinds of information. So think about that the next time somebody wants you to get into a, uh, a loyalty program. But that's not where big data stops. So this is really interesting. I would like everybody in the room, everybody, who has a smartphone in the room? Everybody? So take out your smartphones. And uh, if you could, light up the screen. And this is totally self-serving, but I just thought this would be a really cool conference picture. So everybody hold up these cell phones in the air, pop your screens up, and I'm gonna put all you beautiful people on Instagram with your cell phones in the air. Yay! Awesome. That's a cool picture. So notice how many hands went up, right? More than, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I need to go back to iPhone. More than 50% of the country now has smartphones. So out of all of the cell phones that are out there, and pretty much everybody has one, over half of them are internet ready, app enabled, and can connect to the web and allow you to do much more than just make calls. But that's not where it stops, because tablet computers are actually outpacing the sale of both desktop computers and smartphones on a global scale. And this research comes from Gartner and BI Intelligence. Most people have already owned one, if not two, maybe three tablet computers. That's somebody's in the back like, I got two right here. That's awesome. So what does this mean? Well, it's given rise to this idea of social TV, where now we have a multi-screen experience. We don't just sit down and watch TV. We sit down and we watch TV with our smartphone or our tablet or our laptop, and we talk to our friends about the programs that we're watching. We tweet to hashtags. We watch commercials and we tweet to hashtags, and start, advertisers are starting to use that as well. In July 2012, 157.5 billion minutes were spent on mobile devices. And almost half of all consumers interact on their mobile device while they're watching television, broadcast media. This brings up this idea of two different types of media. We're seeing media split in two. On the one side, we have passive media. Have you ever sat down and watched yourself watching TV? Or watched somebody else watching TV? You kind of got to, you know, there's times where you want to go up and like wipe the drool off their mouth because they're comatose. And that's what we look like when we're watching TV. But when we're on the internet, we're engaged and we're searching and we're seeking out and we're discovering. And now these two are coming together because we're using passive media to discover and interact with active media on the web. And that's leading into the idea of earned, owned, and shared media, because it's this convergence of all kinds of media. Advertisements on TV lead us to the web to do self-discovery on websites and blogs, and then we go out and we share that brand name on Twitter or on Facebook. And this is what you're going to be dealing with when you go into your career, these three different types of media. It's so important that Nielsen, one of the long-standing, oldest measurement companies in media analytics, has partnered with Twitter to create the Nielsen Twitter TV rating. They see this as being incredibly valuable. 
statement from Steve Hasker, who's the president of Global Media Products. As media measurement, as a media measurement leader, we re recognize that Twitter is the preeminent source of real-time television engagement data. For the first time in the history of broadcast media, we don't have to wait three months to get analytics and insights whether or not our program worked or our spot worked. We can get it right away because people start tweeting.